doing it for one hit MMA. Make some noise for Hayden Brown. Sometimes Dave and I step on each other. It's okay. It's okay. It happens. Be friends. Let's all get along. Parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> you got a little aggression in you. Nah. Everything about the parking lot. There's no camera in the parking lot. No one knows when I get my puppy. <laughs> Or when we were. So we appreciate that. Yes. So we're waiting for the music to get going. And then I think someone's going to come out. Mr. Hayden Brown. I can see his shirts. There we go. Sounds more like it. This is a technique that I've seen a oh, nope, never mind. Hey, well, he's coming. So here we go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have Hayden Brown walking out right now. Now, he weighed in at 185 pounds, point zero. Um, he's got a record of three and two with a fighting style of Muay Thai and wrestling. He is over there at One Hit MMA. I'm going to throw that back at you. What do we know about One Hit? Well, they got coaches Aldo Razia, Jared Kelton with Bang Muay Thai, yep. and Lucas Montoya over there. Great coaching. Uh, Aldo is also another great striking coach. Yeah, yeah. Just because you got Jared Kelton over there with the well, well, big boy tie, that doesn't necessarily mean that's the only striking. No, that no, the Eurasia striking system is the original and main striking system of one hit MMA. Um, that Muay Thai based or the um, you know bang Muay Thai is, is more of something that we added to the equation. So you're still getting that normal Eurasia striking system. You know, one thing that I do know about this kid is he's shed a lot of weight recently. Yes. He's really got himself in good shape. He's looking really good. He's looking really ripped. Um, and he's been there, you know, really working hard. You know, he, he kind of takes things almost as an addiction or a passion he'll talk about. And MMA is it right now. Nice. Well, you know, he's kind of a self-proclaimed Viking, too. He's got Thor's hammer on his chest, you know, there, and he came out holding that battle axe. Yes, so, yes. you know, he's, he's in here to just kind of go to war. And uh, he said he got started in MMA. He grew up wrestling, watching MMA and street fighting all the time. He knew that he was going to step into the cage eventually. Uh, it was just a matter of time of when, and this is what he was born to do. He says fighting is in his blood. And then what does he do for work? He's a fire sprinkler pipe fitter. Nice. He said he loves the hard labor hours, so he's putting in hard labor hours, then coming to the gym and putting in hard work there as well. Outstanding. So his goal is to become the best version of himself in every aspect, and shout out to a family, friends, and everybody supporting him in the MMA game. So... We're getting some last-minute instructions by referee Dave Sullyestead, my favorite good-looking man that used to <laughs> yes, be on is. TV every single Sunday or Friday. So we're about to see some action here between these two guys. So I want to talk real quick. Um, Elias Landau's last fight was very slow-paced. I don't think that we're going to see that as much out of a, an opponent like Hayden Brown. But no, no, no. Uh, he's got a bit more aggression. Though. He's got a bit more aggression, and he swings a lot harder. Yeah. He, he's not trying to win off the points. You saw Hayden kind of, you know, nod his head, kind of that that sign of, yeah, I felt it. Yeah, that, that was a good kick. Yeah, yeah, I felt it. I'm good. You know, one thing I like about Elias is that he does acknowledge, you know, yeah, I used to get bullied. Nobody's going to bully this guy anymore. They shouldn't. No, it, you know, he's one of those smart guys that gets in the cage, and generally he fights a smart fight. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I talked about, the like, last fight was right very now. slow paced, but he, he fought it that way to win that fight. Well, and, and that's his style. You know, the, the more he's able to keep this at a slow pace, landing those heavy leg kicks, it, it's more fighting into what Elias wants to do. That first really loud leg kick they threw, and ooh, that that's second... The third, that's the third one that landed yeah, pretty it, hard. And that one landed in the exact same spot as the first one. You can see that giant wilt across the back oh, of the yeah. leg oh, yeah. of uh, Hayden Brown. So, great job so far. And Hayden's doing a good job when he takes them, throwing in some of those punches. Yeah, yeah. That time he reached out like he was going to grab one. But Hayden has that wrestling background, so you're seeing Hayden went for the double, 
and then kind of he noticed the weight weight. He's grabbing my head. He did a great job shooting in on that, but I got to give Elias a lot more credit on that again because he did drop his hips. He didn't just grab the head. He dropped his hips into a squat while grabbing the head, which which takes the control away from Hayden because now you have to lift with your back. Yeah, well, and, and let's look at how the fight's been going. We're about halfway through, about a minute 40 in. Um, you know, you're seeing Hayden kind of controlling the center of the cage. Yes. You're seeing Elias though, effectively striking. Yeah, I honestly, I think Elias's leg kicks have been a little bit more effective than Hayden's striking. Yes, yes. I, I, I mean, I, I've seen, I remember Hayden landed one pretty clean shot on Elias that you could tell kind of, Elias didn't like it. I mean, put it down. Hayden was just pointing to the mat saying you're going down. And uh, I don't think that uh, he's getting in the head of Elias right now. You know, Elias doing a great job whipping those kicks around, but you know he's starting to drop the hands when he throws the kicks, especially with that left leg. Well, and, and you see kind of how slow that that left hook came out. You know, look for Hayden to counter over that. And, and Hayden's really going for blood, but you know Elias did a great job of covering up and trying to. He's continuously moving. He's securing that arm. I, I'm. I'm impressed by Hayden's power right now, but the fact that Elias is still smart enough to continue moving and grabbing things up, I do. Well, and, and I do too. You know, he is in risk when he comes up like that. Right. Now, we did just hear the 10 second click, so he might get out of this round. I think we're going to see. That normally buys you a little more time. I think we're going to see a round number two, and I got to give that to the intelligence behind Elias Landau, knowing. That you know, I'm getting hit. I need to continuously move. I got to advance my position because well, that fight, stop. that fight could have easily been stopped uh, by the referee due to strikes, the TKO, and the fact that Elias was continuing to move and grab for things uh -huh. is the only reason that fight did not get stopped when Hayden was throwing those big, heavy hands. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Hayden did a good job there. You know, Hayden kind of played his game. He was able to land some heavy shots. He was able to get in there. You know, finally kind of get a takedown, I believe. You know, he was able to land some, some shots that you noticed that Elias didn't like. No, I think that's, that's not really at all, yeah. of Elias is, Like most people, he doesn't like getting punched in the mouth. No. Especially <laughs> no, by like, Hayden. Like most intelligent people, yeah. he and, doesn't like getting punched in the face. But I, I think that a big hole in his game on the standing is he's throwing those beautiful leg kicks, and he's landing them. And he's putting some damage on at least the back of the left thigh of uh, Hayden Brown. But the thing is... He is not keeping a good defensive posture when he throws that. He he's doesn't have the longest legs in the world, so he's stepping into the striking distance of Hayden Brown every time he throws one of those yes, leg yes. kicks, and his hands are not staying where they need to be considering how heavy Hayden is throwing those arms. Well, and Hayden's trying to eat him and throw, too. You yes. know? So he, he's he, trying to make him pay for it. He acknowledges he's going to get kicked in the leg. He wants to land one afterwards. Yes, yeah, yeah. You're, you're going to land it on me. It's okay. I'll take it, but you're going to land one in the mouth. Yes. Or I'm going to land one in your mouth. <laughs> um, you know, a little slow right off the bat. You saw Hayden probably had the opportunity a couple times to land a strike or two. But instead, it looks like he's watching the shoulders a little bit more of Elias instead of uh, the leg or the head. Yeah, yeah. So it, I think he's really waiting to pick that punch so that he can get him to the ground again. Well, and, and look, that left hook is much faster than it was before. But again, I, I think, you know, with Elias, the thing is he doesn't like getting hit. No, he doesn't. That one right there really landed hard, and he's stopped defending, and now he's just doing, oh, oh, no, and right when I say that, he starts rolling through right before Dave Sully said stops it, and now he's still in this fight. Well, this is what I remember most of his fights being like. Him taking shots to the head, yet staying in it, Yes. and, and sometimes getting submissions out of it. Oh, that was a big right yes, hand. Yes, yes, wow. And this fight... I am so surprised that this fight's still going on. And this fight's over, ladies and gentlemen. It's over, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Elias Landau just got beat by TKO from Hayden Brown at about a minute and 15 seconds into round number two. Hayden looked good. Hayden looked great. Those were the some of the heaviest punches I've seen all night. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, heavy hands. Yeah, very heavy. And, and, you know, Elias, I got to give this guy so much credit, man. You are not the kid getting bullied on the street anymore. You have 
the most heart of any of the guys that we've seen fight tonight going he's, through that weather storm. He's got a pretty good chance. <laughs> <laughs> he might not know he, it. He didn't go unconscious. No, well, but and, and, and the thing is, you know, if you would take some of those maybe more on the forehead instead of right there in the jaw, yes. you know, if he would be willing to kind of take it a little bit more, he might last a little longer, too. Well, it, you know, a lot of that goes to Hayden Brown. He was fighting those holes, and that was beautiful right there. Yeah. That shot was just perfect. And uh, you could see Elias literally, well, look at Carly, our uh, national anthem singer, covering up. I think and, Hayden's scaring Carly. Yeah, I think Carly looked a little terrified yeah, in that video right there. That's what it looks like. Uh, but Hayden had those beautiful shots. Yeah, she still looks a little freaked out there. And there, we got it paused right on her. That was a perfect, we, <laughs> we should have zoomed a little bit more just on Carly's expression during that exchange. But, man, Hayden Brown really dominated when he landed that well, right. Can I get both fighters to the center of the ring, please? Both fighters to the center of the ring? Come on, yeah, make beautiful. some noise for both of these fighters. Your winner, one minute, 12 seconds into round number two. Ref stoppage due to strikes. Out of the black corner, Hayden Brown! All right, hey, let me just go over here. Nice show of sportsmanship. You need to talk to the other coaches. You need to talk to your point. So, wow, heavy hands, man. Thank you. I've been working a lot with all my coaches over at One Hand MMA. I'd like to thank those guys for bringing me up from where I started. I'm like a completely different person. I couldn't be more thankful. Well, you've done a lot on your end. I know you've been in there working really hard. I know you, I, I gotta talk about your physique. You've cut a lot of weight down. You're looking good. You still got power in your hands. What's next for Hayden Brown? Um, what's next for me is I'd like to get a shot at that 170-pound vacant amateur amateur belt. Hey, Kevin, I think heard that. So uh, let me see. What what case do you think you should make for that belt? That makes me three. You know, three wins in a row by stoppage inside the steel fist cage, and I think that speaks for itself. Hey, uh, pretty convincing argument. So, let me ask you this. You got any fans, family, friends you want to thank? Oh, of course. All these people over here. I'd, I'd really like to thank everybody that came out to support me. You guys, I, w I wouldn't be where I'm at without you. My showing wasn't as good as it could have been because about three weeks ago, I got an injury in training. I didn't even know that I was going to fight until about a week ago. So, I'd like to thank you guys for buying tickets and coming out to support me, even though... There was a chance that I might not be fighting. Well, we didn't notice that injury in the cage. I want to see you back here. Way to make your case to Kevin. Maybe grab me afterwards, see if we can do it again. Everybody, a big round of applause for Hayden Brown. All right, make some noise, Team Brown. Sherry, you can look again. Your boy's all right. Big old smile on his face, walking out of here with his third win. Make some noise for Hayden Brown. I've known this kid since he was nine years old. He was a skinny little punk on a BMX bike. I call him Sir now. Holy smokes. All right, I've got a uh, driver's license.